Hello once again everybody, this is Playing With Mui with another video game playthrough. This time it's Battletoads for the NES. Yeah, seriously. That game. Anybody who's played this game is going to know that, yeah, this is going to be one heck of a playthrough. Yeah, totally. Um, this game is pretty much well-renowned for its extreme difficulty, and I'm going to show and explain why that is as this playthrough progresses. Unfortunately, this isn't a live playthrough, so that takes all the rage out of it. Thankfully. This game is also made by Rare, who also made the Donkey Kong Country series, Banjo-Kazooie series, Diddy Kong Racing, and other games I can't think of right now. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Anyway, uh, so it shows off the three Battletoads in the game. Unfortunately, you're only able to play as two, as this fancy cutscene will show uh, one of the Battletoads, Pimple, and a princess, amazingly, princesses in video game, are kidnapped! while they're driving around in some sort of floaty space car by some sort of strange pig-looking thing. Anyway, Professor T. Bird, back on the Vulture, as their ship's called, informs the remaining two Battletoads of the situation. That, of course, is Rash and Zitz. They, they have amazing names, I have to say. They, they came up with the best names. Um, and then that brings us to... The Dark Queen and her two most powerful and loyal minions, Robo Manus and Big Blag. And I like this little cutscene here, not for the obvious reason, but because it's sort of, you know, with this little bit here, it's like still fancier chances, it kind of feels like an arcade style intro, you know? It's like if I saw that in an arcade screen, I would be so tempted to just like put a coin in there. I gotta try this game. And then I would be horribly disappointed to know that this game kicked my ass. Yeah, I'm going to be saying that quite a bit because it's going to happen, okay? It's going to happen. So, yeah, as you can see, this game is a, a side-scrolling beat-em-up for the most part. And uh, I'm having trouble with already the first two enemies in the game. Yeah. Um, they're most... I, I would say their most trademark feature is the fact that they have a sort of finishing attack where their their hands and feet become gigantic, and it's it's very awesome. It's very comical, very unique. Watch this. Bam! Gigantic fist of doom. And when you break this crazy robot thing, uh, it drops a couple of weapons for you to use. That's always convenient, you know? I, I, I like that. You know, it definitely makes it easier. And also for this game, I didn't mention this before, I am going to be using infinite lives, and I have no problem admitting this. Because this game, like I've said, is incredibly hard, and of course it doesn't really look that way at first. But you'll get to say, oh yeah, here's the little flies that, uh, well, fly around, and you can sort of eat them, and unfortunately I missed, and they will give you back one bit of health. Under my score on the top left, you can see that there's I have three bits of health out of six. So, you know, I should watch that. And uh, there's all sorts of crazy enemies. Now, basically... Okay, I just fell and died. Yeah, that, that tends to happen quite a bit. You know, usually it shouldn't happen in the first stage, but you know what? It's been literally ages since I've played this game. And yes, I have played this game a long, long time ago, uh, pretty much when it was new. There's buggies. Buggies. And there's a one-up. Basically, it's just... Oh, God. It's just text on the screen. You go and grab it. Now, basically, every time there's a boss, their jaws drop in a very amazingly comical way. Now, this first boss is very unique as because, it, basically, it's not showing um, the perspective of your actual character. It's showing the perspective of the boss, which is really cool. Basically, what you want to do is take these rocks throw them back at the boss, which is basically at the screen, amazingly, which is pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, you defeat him. It's, it's really unique. And speaking of unique, the Dark Queen will always talk trash to you between levels. It's really awesome. I don't know why, but it's just cool. It really sets the mood of the game. Now, just like that, we're on to level two. And this is the Wookiee Hole. Ow. Friggin' crows. Uh, birds in video games, okay? They're they're as bad as bat bats. B vats and bats, okay? Vat like <laughs> Vats of bats, okay? 
yeah, I, no, I'm not gonna save myself from that stumble. I screwed up. Alrighty then. So anyway, there's a strange sort of um, Venus flytrap type things here, or like piranha plants, I guess, and buggies. And these crows, you want to watch out for them because they will snip your wire, and that's an instant death. No! No crow! You are very bad for doing that, and they also, every time you kill each one of them, they will drop a weapon for you to use. I, I don't know what that is. Like, some sort of sharpened feather, or a discolored part of their beak? I don't know. It's, I have no idea what the thing is. Oh, no! You definitely want to get rid of this guy fast because he has an electric attack that will take out half of your strength. Or half of your health in one hit. Yeah. Now, something I also did not mention. Uh, uh, because I didn't play this game for a long time, I sort of, kind of forgot that there's a actual uh, technique that you can do. If you double tap in the same direction, you will do a dash. Damn you! You will do a dash, which I actually showed off here, amazingly. I didn't really think about it. Um... But I pretty much forgot about it, and I have to admit, it would have made the game a lot simpler. But let's just say that this is, um, you know, a, a challenge playthrough, okay? No dash challenge playthrough. Battletoads playthrough. Yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> We're getting past the stupidity by just calling it a challenge. Alright then. Well, yeah, that's not so much fun. Yeah, pretty much all the electricity in this game, as I sort of got reminded here, uh, will take out half of your health, and it's not fun. There's actually a trick that you can do here. If you keep hitting the enemies that fall down, you can continue to rack up points, uh, sort of like in Mario when you, you know, jump on enemies consecutively and you get, you know, multiples of points until you get a 1-up. That's basically what happens here. And if you get enough points or enough hits in a row, you also get a 1-up. Buggies! But I don't need them, because I have full health. And infinite lives! That's always good. Okay, then. <laughs> just, just pound on him, you know? Just make him go away. Make him go away! There's a lot of crows in this hole. What is... What, what's, what's with that? I don't know. Oh, no! Now, there are some enemies that are gray. The reason why they're gray is because they're a little bit tougher than normal colored enemies. And... Uh, in some cases, they have a tendency, if they're not doing it already, to chase you. And, yeah, took care of that guy pretty simply. Die, die, die. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, I mean, pretty pretty straightforward. This level is kind of long. And, yeah, that chime, as you can see, I now have four hearts. I don't really, doesn't really matter. Uh, one up, basically. Every 100,000 points you get, you get a one up. Now, like I said, this game is ridiculously, unbelievably, crazily uh, difficult. And this is treacherous here. Yeah, I, I want no part of that. Ah! And we are at the end of the stage. Thank God. Ugh. Pond Patrol. That's just great, okay? And look at her on the screen. She looks, like, hilarious. It's very cartoonish, this whole game. And... Yeah, now we're going into level three, the Turbo Tunnel. I hate this stage, and you're going to see why. Now, basically, oh, there's a new thing. Oh, God, gigantic boot of doom, as well as pounding them into the ground, which is also awesome. Uh, you're going to see why exactly this level is called the Turbo Tunnel. It's not going very fast at first, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. Oh, yeah, this beat. You have to jump over here. Now, at one point, I actually was curious... Oh no, Space Invaders! These guys you definitely want to take care of because they will take bits of your health away and just steal them away. And I'm, I was pretty much sitting there like... What? Ugh, space Invaders! Anyways. I'm pretty sure that's what they're... they're you know, I'm, I don't know if that's actually their official name, but they, they, look, they look a heck of a lot like the game Space Invaders. Anyway, goodbye, and so long! Eh, mm, nope, sort of... Uh, no, get out of here. Thank you. God. Buggy. Now, I was kind of curious. Yeah, if you fall into the ball pit of doom, you will die. <laughs> I don't even know what those things are, and I don't want to know, to be honest. Now, basically, um, I suppose I should get to a little tiny bit of information. Um, this game is basically developed by Rare Limited, 
And the game was created to rival the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, to sort of capitalize on their success. <clears throat> their success. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, so before I can even get into any information, I might as well just explain what just is going on here. Now, this is the reason why it's called the Turbo Tunnels. Basically, you jump on one of these uh, fancy hover motorcycle type things, and you have to go through an obstacle course that moves kind of fast. It's pretty self-explanatory. The, bl the blocks will blink on what side that they appear, and you want to be on the opposite side of what they appear on. And eventually, there will be hurdles that you have to jump over. And I also didn't mention it, but if you notice, there was actually two of those uh, uh, motorcycles. At least I believe there was. I wasn't really looking. Basically, this, uh, this game supports multiplayer, two-player, cooperative gameplay. And that was a checkpoint, actually. Um... Oh no! That was really smart. Yeah, you definitely want to not jump over the ramps. The ramps are meant to make you jump. The two-player co-op, I'm sure I'll get to that. It's really... Uh, it's insane, okay? I'm just gonna go with that. It's insane. So yeah, while this insanity is going on, you know, because, you know, during the incitement... During the excitement, I have to read stuff. Um... It was first developed for the NES and is subsequent, subsequently ported to the Amiga and as well as the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis and the Game Gear and the Game Boy and I just crashed. Yeah, that's not fun. And I got another 1-Up amazing because I got another 100,000 points because I'm just awesome like that. As you see, as you drive by, God, this is getting really fast, uh, you gain like 100 points like every friggin split second whoa yeah you definitely not want to jump there oh but you definitely want to jump here oh my god we oh yeah now here comes the beavers on the missiles I'm, I'm gonna assume that's what those things are oh I got distracted by the beaver damn you beavers go damn a river get it yeah crazy anyway time skippery just jumping back over to where I was before oh my god um, <laughs> more information. Oh my god, checkpoint. Okay. I know, I'm really, I'm, I'm really off my mark here. I'm really back and forth. Um, it's arguably one of the most graphically advanced video games ever released for the NES. I mean, seriously, look at that thing. It, it's got really, am ah, that was really smart. Really amazing looking graphics and the sort of like, quote unquote, camera angles uh, are really interesting. Holy crap, that was a jump. Oh yeah, and these things with the sort of, you gotta dodge them. Now, this is where it gets really insane. I had a lot of trouble with this part. I don't know what it was, if it was like a glitch, or maybe it was like a bad ROM or something, or maybe I just wasn't doing it right, but I had a lot of trouble trying to land these platforms. Just look at this. Jump. Okay, well now I, yeah, see what? It's like I go through the platforms. And then, what, what's going on here? And if, you, and if you're wondering what that sort of, yeah, that sort of little tune was, that's when you pause the game. It has, like, its own little fancy music. Ah, uh, there we go. I finally got it. Oh, God! Oh, thank God for that checkpoint. Now, this is where it gets ridiculous. Uh, yeah, couldn't even pretty much get off the starting gate, so to speak. Ah, uh, eat. Oh, 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 my God. Yeah, yeah, it, it goes pretty fast. Uh, now, if you notice, there was actually a pillar that sort of, um was blinking, and if you actually run into it, it's a warp zone to advance you to further levels. Out of the frying pan and into the surf. Yeah, I, I know that quote, of course. But yeah, we don't want to go to stage five Surf City. We want to finish up stage three, the turbo tunnels. So we're going to try that. E uh, e uh, uh, oh, God, jump. Oh, my God. Beavers. No. <laughs> yes. Thank you. It's over. Ah, oh, thank God. <laughs> Oh, the madness is over. Heck yeah, play Leapfrog well. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to take the bikes with me, no. Anyway, oh, woo, that was something else. That's it for this part of the Battletoads playthrough. Join me in part two, where we'll be doing level four, the Arctic Caverns. I almost forgot the name. See you all next time.